In this video, we will be going over very, very difficult isotopes, relative atomic mass examples. If you missed my first two videos, in the first video, I went over what isotopes are, relative atomic mass, and we practice a very basic standard question. You can also get those in your test. So you want to check out that video first. In the second video, I practice kind of challenging ones that, you know, if you get them in the test, they're quite difficult, but these are very difficult. So if you've missed the first two videos, you have to go watch those first. I'll link them up here and in the description box below. But if you're ready for level three, very, very difficult exam examples, let's jump right in. But first, make sure you've subscribed if you haven't already. I do math, I do physics, chemistry. Let's go. First of all, just as a reminder, isotopes are atoms of the same element. They have the same atomic number, same number of protons, but different mass numbers because their number of neutrons differ. This is one of the questions that I did in my previous videos. If you want to go check it out, I did this one as well. Okay, this one. Magnesium has three isotopes, Mg24, 25, and 26. Now, read carefully. They say Mg25 and 26 occur in equal percentage abundances. They ask us to define the term isotope. I'm not doing that. I did that earlier in this video. Then they say calculate the percentage occurrence, or basically that is percentage abundance of each of these isotopes. And they tell me to take the relative atomic mass of magnesium to be 24,3. So basically what they've done is they've given me the answer and you need to work backwards to get the percentages of each of the three isotopes. So if you take a look at the formula, which we've been working with, what they gave me, the 24,3 is the answer. The relative atomic mass, this is basically what appears on the periodic table as the big number, the atomic mass number. And we need to work backwards using the answer to work out the percentage abundance of each of the three. Now, first of all, this formula is not going to work because I've only got two brackets, but in this question, I have three isotopes. So what I've done is I've just extended the formula. So each little bracket is for each of the isotopes. So Mg24, Mg25 and Mg26. The mass numbers are the 24, 25 and 26. Okay. We need to work out the percentage abundances. So if I have to substitute into the formula, what I have so far is as follows. I have the 24,3 which is the answer, it's the relative atomic mass, and for each bracket what I have is as follows. I have not the percentages, but I have the mass number. So this is for Mg24, the mass number is 24. Okay, I'm leaving a space open here for the percentage abundance. I'm going to fill something in there now. The mass number for the second, this is the second bracket's for Mg25, so I'm going to put 25 there. Then the third bracket is for Mg26, so you times by 26, the mass numbers, 24, 25, 26. But what am I going to put in there for the percentages? Oh, we must divide by 100. The formula says divide by 100, that's important. What am I going to put in here for the percentages? And you could say, ma'am, you could say the percentage is X. Not a bad place to start, but you can't say this is X, X, and X. Absolutely not. Because if you say X, X, and X, you're telling me that all three of them occur in equal percentage abundances or percentage occurrences. That's not what the question says. The question says 25 and 26 occur in equal percentage abundances. So what we could do is we could say, okay, Mg25, I'm going to call that X. If Mg25 is X, Mg26 is also X because 25 and 26 occur in equal percentage abundances. So Mg25, the percentage abundance, I don't know what it is, I'm calling it X. Same thing as Mg26, the percentage, that's what I'm subbing in now, I'm subbing in percentages, is X. But what about the percentage abundance for Mg24? Now, how I figure it out is as follows. This is rough work, so you can do it on the side of your page. You can erase it afterwards, scratch it out, whatever. I don't have space, so I'm going to do it over here um, at the bottom, but then I'm going to erase it. So what I do is as follows. The percentage of Mg25 plus the percentage of Mg26 plus the percentage of Mg24, if I add those three percentage abundances together, what should it give me? So if I add all the percentages together, it should give me 100%, okay? The three, the percentages of all the isotopes that exist. If, I, if there's three of them, if I add those three percentages together, it has to give me 100. Okay, so what we know so far is that Mg25, we called it X. 
MG26, I'm calling it X. I don't know yet what the percentage of MG24, what I must call it in my formula, but I know that the three of them together must give me 100. Okay, I hope you're with me. What I can do now is I'm trying to figure out what to call percentage of MG24 in this formula up here. Okay, so what I do is if I want to get percentage of MG24 alone in this formula, I know X plus X plus MG24 percentage, all of that together must give me 100. So what I can do is I can say 100 minus X minus X, that will be my percentage of MG24. I hope it makes sense. It's like I'm isolating this variable over here, trying to get it alone. I take the X over, it becomes minus X. I take the other X over, it becomes minus X. So at the moment, I've got 100 minus X minus X. That is equal to the percentage of MG24. So what is the percentage of MG24? It's basically 100 minus 2X. I really hope that makes sense. That is what makes this question tricky. So I'm going to sub it in here as 100 minus 2X. And it needs to go in its own little brackets. Now, once you've figured out that it's 100 minus 2X, then you can erase all your rough work over here. You don't need it. And the rest of this question is just maths. It's just solving. It is basically grade 10 algebra, grade 10 solving. Sorry, let me just show you here. I put 100 minus 2X. That is the percentage of magnesium 24. Okay, that is the percentage in the brackets. I'm timesing it by 24. X is the percentage of magnesium 25 times 25. X is the percentage of magnesium 26 times 26. Let's do the algebra. The algebra over here is very similar to the one that I did in the previous video. So hopefully if you understand that, you'll understand this one. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify the top of the fraction. Because this whole bracket here is a percentage and it's being multiplied by the 24, both terms inside the bracket need to be multiplied by the 24. So we're basically distributing. So it's going to be basically 24 times 100. So it is 2,400 and 24 times negative 2x, so negative 48x. Then to simplify this bracket, it's just 25x. Then to simplify the third bracket, it's just 26x. All of that is divided by 100, and they told me in the question it's equal to 24, 3. I hope you're with me. All I basically did is simplify the top of the fraction. Then I've got on this side of the fraction, over here, I've got divide by 100. You need to take the 100 over. When you're solving and you take it to the other side, you do inverse operations. So what's the opposite of divide by 100? Times by 100. So we're going to times 24.3 by 100, basically, okay? Because this means divide by 100. So we need to times both sides of the equation by 100, times this side by 100. Remember, that'll end up canceling the hundreds there. So we've got two, four, three, zero. And then what's left on the right hand side is 2,400 minus 48x plus 25x plus 26x. And then you do like terms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 2,400 over. It was plus 2,400. It's going to become minus 2,400. So 2,430 minus 2,400, which is obviously 30. And then these like terms I can add together. So we've got 25x plus 26x minus 48x is 3x. So basically my answer, 30 divided by 3, x is equal to 10. Now, you need to finish the question off properly for me, please. Remember, in the beginning of the question, what we did is we said we're going to call mg25x and mg26x. And we called MG24 100 minus 2X. So therefore, I got X as being 10. So that means that MG25 is 10% abundance. MG26 is also 10% abundance. And MG24 is 100 minus 2X. So 100 minus 10 minus 10, which is 80% abundance. And it makes sense because if you add these three percentages together, 
it gives you 100%. I hope this example made sense. Let's do another difficult one. In this one, we say that element A has three isotopes, A25, A23, and A26. They say A26 has 20% less abundance than A23. And again, they are giving me the answer, the relative atomic mass. Determine the percentage abundance for each isotope. So again, just like in the previous example, we basically have the answer and each isotope gets its own bracket. Now it's determining and figuring out which one must be X and how to figure out the other percentages. That's actually the tricky part. So this is what I would do. They say that A26 has 20% less abundance than A23. So I think it makes sense to say that A23 will be X. Okay, so we're going to let A23 be X. Okay, X percent, let's just call it X. Then A26 has 20% less abundance than A23. So I hope it makes sense that A26 will be X minus 20. Because say, for example, A23 was 70%. A26 will be 20% less. So 20% less than 70 will be 50. So X minus 20. So if it had to say 20% more, then it would be plus 20. Okay, so X and X minus 20. But what about the third isotope? So what about A25? We use the same method as we used for the previous example. So what I would do is as follows. I would say, okay, cool. The percentage of A23 plus the percentage of A26 plus the percentage of A25. Add all those percentages together. It must give me 100%. Just keep remembering that the, the total percentage abundance that exists in the universe must be 100. Can't be less, can't be more. You only have three isotopes. Their percentages must equal to 100%. So we've so far figured out that A23 is going to be X plus A26 is going to be X minus 20. Plus, I don't know yet what A25 is going to be. You can call it question mark. You can call it Y. You can call it whatever. I'm just going to leave it like that. Now, if I want to figure out what the percentage of A25 will be, I just do algebra. So I'm going to get the percentage of A25 alone. I'm going to say 100. Take the plus X over. It's going to become minus X. Take this plus X over. It's going to become minus X. Take the minus 20 over, it's going to become plus 20. So let's simplify that. The percentage of A25 that I'm going to put in the formula is going to be like terms, put them together. 100 plus 20 is going to be 120 minus x minus x minus 2x. So this is an expression that represents the percentage abundance of A25. So we've got x x minus 20 and 120 minus 2x. I hope that makes sense. That's what I'm going to put in here. So a 23 x times 23. a 25, here we go, a 25, put it in brackets, 120 minus 2x times 25. a 26, put it in brackets, x minus 20, that is the percentage, times 26. Now, this stuff is all rough work, so I can erase it, and then I can do the math, just normal solving math. So I hope at this point you understand how to solve it. So I'm going to solve it quickly and then see if it makes sense. Just remember that these percentages here must go in brackets, and then we'll distribute this into the brackets to simplify. Okay, so this will be distributed into that bracket, and that will be distributed into that bracket. So let me finish the sum for you. So what I've done so far is just distribute, and now I'm going to simplify the top. So I put the like terms together, and I got negative x, and I said 3,000 minus 520, and I got that. My next step is this is divide by 100. I take it over. It's going to become multiply by 100, and then I should get my answer for x. So I get x as being 55, but remember, you need to finish off the question. You can't just leave it like that. You need to tell me the percentage abundances of each of the three isotopes. Now, I remember in the beginning of the sum, we called A23X. So you need to finish off the sum as follows. So A23 will therefore be 55%. 
A26 will be 55 minus 20, so 35%. And A25 will be 120 minus 2x. So it's basically 120 minus 2 times 55. And I get 10%. If you add up these three percentages, you get 100%. So you know that you did it correctly. Great tens, please let me know if you want to see more of those difficult ones. I have more. I have more difficult ones that I can do with you. I just need to know if you want to see them, if this is something that interests you, something that you want to do. Remember, if you can do the difficult ones, the easy ones that you may come across in the exam are going to be super, super easy. Remember to subscribe for more videos like this. And I can't wait to see you in more maths, physics, and chemistry videos. Bye, everybody.